Good afternoon. Today is April 30th, Tuesday, uh, 2019. Lane County Board of Commissioners meeting, item 13A. This is public hearing in order 1903-30-08 in the matter of annexing territory to the McKenzie Fire and Rescue District to provide fire protection service to the annexed territory consisting of 19 point acre portion of assessors map 16-25-27 lot tax lot number uh, 400. And with us to discuss this is Rachel Serslev, a uh, planner with Lane County uh, Land Management Division. Um, and Ms. Serslev, uh, would you like to make some comments before I read the procedural rules for this public hearing? Um, no, I don't need to make comments now. I can just wait until uh, we hear a report by staff. Okay, so let's uh, hear the report by staff first, and then we'll have the... Um, and then we'll have the public hearing. Or do you want to do the public hearing first? Um, you can go ahead and open it and then I'll give the report. Okay, at this time we are opening the public hearing on uh, order 1904-30-08. And uh, at this time we will uh, go down the list. Uh, this is a public hearing on a matter uh, which gives opportunity to, for those present to enter information into the record. And if the board approves the proposal, the board can adopt a final order on the annexation. Uh, and the decision criteria for special district annexation, annexations are established in Lane County Board Order 19-04-30, um, which is cited in our agenda cover memorandum. At this time, I will ask if there are commissioners who wish to uh, disclose ex party contacts or absent abstentions due to conflicts of interest, ex party contacts or biases. Are there any commissioners that want to make such a uh, statement at this time? Nope. Nope, seeing none, uh, I'll ask the audience, Is there are there any members of the audience that wish to challenge the hearings authority, that's the board of commissioners, authority and qualifications to hear this matter? Nope, so at this time our public hearing is opening and uh, opened and at this time now we are asking staff to make a report. Welcome, Ms. Serslev. Thank you, Chair Sorensen and good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Rachel Serslev, staff planner on this application. The request before you today is the annexation of a portion of a single tax lot into the McKenzie Fire and Rescue District. The area being annexed is a 19.2 acres of assessor's map 16, 25, 27 tax lot 400. Uh, the remaining acres of the tax lots that, that's being annexed is already within the fire district. Uh, this petition was initiated pursuant to ORS 198.857 for the annexation of a property by a single uh, landowner and pursuant to Lane County Board Order 07-12-12-19, which provides guidance for processing applications related to special district, district boundaries. Public notice as required by ORS 198 and the board's order was posted, published, and mailed. As of today, I have not received any written comments about uh, this application. Generally, the territory Territory proposed to be annexed is located northeast of the unincorporated community of Vida, uh, north of McKenzie Highway. Properties surrounding the subject property are also within the boundaries of McKenzie Fire uh, Protection District, except for two of them that are to the north of that property. Um, the subject property does have conditional approval for a dwelling, and one of the conditions of approval for that dwelling is to be either annexed into a fire district or um, demonstrate residential fire protection by contract. Um, so the applicant has chosen to do the annexation. Uh, approval of the, this request by the board will enable the conditionally approved dwelling to have fire protection services by amending the boundaries of the fire district. The applicant has provided information and findings addressing the approval criteria in their application, and staff has found that the, appro the applicable approval criteria has been met in this case, and these findings are included in the agenda cover memo. 
Uh, most notably, the applicant has included written approval of the annexation request from the McKenzie Fire uh, and Rescue District Board of Directors. This is evidenced by a resolution dated April 12, 2018, as provided um, as attachment two of your packet. And based on this approval by the fire district and the findings made by staff, uh, staff recommend that the board approve uh, the annexation. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, do commissioners have any uh, questions for Ms. Zerslow? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move now to the uh, uh, public testimony. At this time, I'll call for any applicant's testimony. Is there any applicant's testimony? Seeing none, we will move to any testimony of people in favor of this matter. Seeing none, we'll move to testimony of other people. Uh, seeing none, we will ask for additional comments from staff. I have none. None. We will ask for applicant rebuttal. None. At this time, we will now close the public hearing and we will turn to the board for a discussion or a motion. All right, I'll uh, make a motion. Oh, there it went. Sorry. Okay. Technology. I'll make a motion to approve. Item 13A on today's consent calendar for order 19-04-30-08 as presented. Okay, there is a motion to approve order 19-04-30-08, which is to annex territory into the McKenzie Fire and Rescue District. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Buck, seconded by Commissioner Bozovich to approve the, uh, the order as presented. Uh, any further uh, comment, debate, uh, et cetera? Commissioner Farr. If I may, just to compliment, Ms. Sorslev, I want to compliment you on your, uh, your presentations. You're very clear, very concise, you get it out there, and even though nobody out there seems to care, it's uh, uh, very well done. I'd like to say that right in front of uh, the person who I think is your boss. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll also add that uh, in reading over this agenda item, I thought, well, this is not going to be a controversial thing. It hardly ever is. I can only remember one time when we had an annexation that was particularly controversial. And yet, uh, that's why we're here, right? We're here to do the job that we're here to do. And so if that is to sit here and have a public hearing at which no one attends, uh, that's what the law requires. And these folks in these 19.2 acres are going to get the fire protection because we did all this. And nobody's really going to care until maybe ever. Uh, hopefully there won't be any fires. But if there are, at least these people are better protected. So... I, I, I agree with Commissioner Farr. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel, specifically. Uh, okay, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The motion carries five to zero. All commissioners voting in the affirmative. Uh, and the order is adopted. Thanks very much. Thank and now we are uh, turning to two items under assessment and taxation. I'll ask Mr. Coles to come forward, bring whoever you'd like to the table. Um, and at this time, I'm going to read uh, item 14A, which is uh, order zero, excuse me, order 19-04-30-09 in the matter of approving submission of the county assessment function funding assistance, CAFA, grant application to the Oregon Department of Revenue for fiscal year 2019-20. Uh, and um, uh, this is our opportunity to submit the grant application so that we receive funds from the state to perform the uh, assessment and taxation function. Welcome, Mr. Coles. Thank you, uh, Chair Sorensen. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. Um, today I come before you uh, with the CAFA grant presentation. Uh, I'm going to 
do it a little differently in prior years just because we have the two new commissioners uh, to explain a little more uh, detailed information. Um, hope that works out well. Uh, the CAFA grant was originally established in 1989. It was as a result of the deterioration of the property tax system statewide. Uh, it was essentially funded by two areas. One was a recording fee, and the second area was part of a delinquent property tax interest. It goes to a statewide pool and is re redistributed back to the counties and the Oregon Department of Revenue uh, by uh, percentages based on expenditures that are approved by the Oregon Department of Revenue. It's a yearly grant submission. Uh, originally, back in 89, 90, and uh, wasn't with the county at that time, but it, it originally the percentage of CAFA grant reimbursement was 35, maybe 40% as far as originally intended. However, over the years, uh, that's gone down to 17% roughly. It's been 16, 17. 35, 40% of what? Of ex expenditures, I'm sorry. Uh, so if, like right now our budget is uh, roughly $7 million uh, for assessment taxation. Uh, the CAFA grant right now uh, is expected to bring in about $1.1 $1 .1 million. So it's about 17%. So uh, back in the prior days where our budget might have been a little lower, obviously years back, uh, actually it was a lot, it was more because we had quite a bit more staff. Uh, it was provided by the state from the recording fees and the delinquent interest for the 35, 40% for the reimbursement from the state. Um, in the board packet, there is quite a bit of history over the years, and I'll uh, uh, spare you from reading too much of the, the history, but it goes through the years that assessment taxation has gone through cuts and ads over the years and uh, quite a bit of uh, history on also the legislative history standpoint of how the uh, House bill originally was revised. Uh, one of the biggest revisions was the legislature in 1999 uh, contributed uh, general fund dollars to the CAFA grant and that was uh, pulled away. I believe it was five or six years ago off the top of my head. Um, so right now, the CAFA grant does not have general fund dollars for the state of Oregon inside it. It's all dollars that the citizens of, of, of Lane County and all other counties in the state of Oregon pay in the interest and also the recording fees. Uh, I have to make note that the CAFA grant is a, uh, a grant that we are, Lane County, a donor county, where we pay more into it than we receive. And it's just the structure of the original grant. Uh, typically, the larger counties do pay more into it, and then the smaller counties receive more uh, than they pay into it. Um, it's worked uh, fairly well, uh, it, with the exception of the declining uh, reimbursement rates over the years. And the part of that reimbursement declining is not only the general fund dollars, but the increase in expenditures over the years also. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that is major. Um, there's a, quite a bit of information about uh, financial considerations. Every year, the Oregon Department of Revenue gives us a preliminary forecast and a final forecast of how recording fees are statewide, how the delinquent interest is statewide, and also there's a minor component of the CAFA grant uh, for interest on those items that also is contributed to the fund that's distributed among the counties. The overall uh, percentage uh, from the prior year is pretty s similar to what last year's was. Last year's was about 16, 17 percent, and this year's also expected to be about 16 and a half, 17 percent for reimbursement of our expenditures. Um, that said, any questions from the Chair, Commissioner. Okay, any questions? Yep. So, Mike, I know when we had to make the cuts in, in uh, 11 and 12, we had to reduce your staff and we had to ask for an exception to continue getting our CAFA grant um, based on we're supposed to maintain a certain level of staffing and all that. Are we still having to ask for that exception? 
we don't officially have to ask for that exception. However, the Department of Revenue has loosened up a little bit in their, their guidelines for alternative reappraisal standards. We do a lot of recalculation now. Essentially, all of our residential accounts are modeled and valued uh, in-house, with exception of about four or 5,000 that are appraised each year from physical inspections. So uh, the warning essentially that they gave us or the, the variance uh, when they came and did the uh, review of our county st st officially still stands, but they haven't, they, since they haven't revoked it or changed it, but they don't include that verbiage in their paperwork to us when they certify the CAFA grant. They, they are still concerned about Lane County and uh, numerous other counties that are especially ONC counties. Um, the uh, counties that are also have lower ta permit tax rates. Um, but I, I th believe that uh, the Oregon Department of Revenue with the um, current administration, we are working very well together to work out any issues or problems. Uh, we have a really close relationship. Um, I, I have uh, Biweekly or uh, monthly, depending on the administration, uh, phone calls with the director of Oregon Department of Revenue to make sure we're on track. And uh, with our ratio study that we turn in each year, we certify that we're at 100% of real market value. Obviously, uh, our staffing is still low. We have 49 staff members, including administration. Uh, back uh, when staffing was cut, we cut a whole series of office assistants. We also cut appraisal positions. And so we've had to adapt over the years uh, using different alternative methods for valuation and prioritizing our work to make sure it's done correctly and accurately to the best of our abilities. Yeah, so kind of as a follow-up, wasn't there a bill proposed this year in the legislature that was gonna add um, funds for some of the counties that were having difficulty to try and assist in I guess, I guess they were gonna try and do it through some kind of alternative funding stream. And at one point they were talking about use, having districts pay a percent, but then they changed that. But it was gonna to add to your ability to do more appraisals, uh, on-site appraisals to try and help add value uh, so, uh, to uh, support Sheriff the districts. Uh, Commissioner uh, Buckovich, um, it, it is uh, 2104. And that bill is on hold right now. Uh, it is uh, waiting for some of the larger packages to go through for the income cap and trade, some other packages. I'm hoping it still does go through. Essentially what that bill would do would uh, allow for a reduction in the commercial industrial property tax discount for uh, down 1%, and that would be uh, distributed essentially 10% to the Oregon Department of Revenue um, and then the additional funds to the counties in the form of either grant programs or and or uh, additional CAFA funds. I, I've been uh, watching that pretty closely. I, I probably will go testify for legislature when that does go uh, in front of the House Revenue Committee or the uh, Joint Committees. And uh, right now it's kind of, I don't know the odds of it passing, but I, I hope it does because that will add considerable additional funds close to the first calculation was right around 900000 a million dollars, but I think it's going to be a little less depending on overall at the end of, end of the, um, uh, the legislative cycle as far as in the end of the uh, calculations. It's probably going to be $800,000 or somewhat, that, which would be eight or nine positions or more for our office, which would be incredible. Yeah, which would help go out and look for missing uh, value that's not being taxed right now, which would benefit all of the districts in, in Lane County. Um, seeing we only, Lane County only gets about 11 to 12 cents on a dollar, depending on where you live. Uh, that, that other 88 to 89 cents is going to school districts, fire districts, you know, library districts and cities um, across the county, other special districts. So, that, you know, I, I hope that eventually the legislature you know, appreciates how much that's going to be helpful and, and kind of, um, you know, that rising tide will float all boats uh, as, as they, we look for ways to deal with trying to prevent a lot of the service cuts um, in, in local government from, you know, libraries, schools, and, and, 
and cities. So I, I appreciate your efforts on that, that uh, legislation. Uh, Chair Sorensen, Commissioner Bozovich, um, I, I definitely agree as far as the uh, additional funds uh, would help out uh, definitely and uh, just the uh, uh, focus on assessment taxation and the needs that are needed statewide. Um, even if the bill doesn't pass, it's bringing great attention. In fact, the governor's PERS document highlighted in uh, uh, 2104 is part of the reform in the, in the PERS document, which is kind of a strange area to put it, but they, at least it's been highlighted. It was initially put in the governor's budget. I worked with uh, the county administrator, uh, Steve Krajewski, and myself, and uh, two other assessors uh, with the governor's office to help frame uh, the 2104 and Oregon Department of Revenue. So I really do hope that goes forward. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Coles, and uh, thanks so much for all your hard work in, in your main job, but also in this component of trying to get us a, a um, fair shake in terms of the uh, CAFA grant and how the state comes up with the formula and how they give us the money and how we'd like to get more money and how to make it fair for everybody. So thanks a lot. Do we need a motion on the? Mm. Yes. We probably do yeah. if we have a proposed order. Yes. So, Commissioner so, uh, Bozovich. I'll move approval of order 1904-3009 in the matter of approving submission of the county assessment function funding assistance grant application to the Oregon Department of Revenue for FY1920. Second. And good. And for all of you out there that uh, speak fluent Bostonian, a CAFA is not an, an, a small cow. Okay. All right. So, um, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it took me about three years to learn that around here. Okay. So, um, I just, again, I just want to say thank you so much for this. I, I wish we were at a point where we didn't have to do this. I really do. I think if we had some kind of other funding mechanism, and I know the counties have proposed a percentage of the funds collected or something, but then that usually comes out of somebody's hide and, Typically, that's out of public schools, which isn't a good thing in my mind. But um, it'd be nice if we had some other funding formula. So I'll just say it that way. Okay. Anything further from board? No. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Order 19-04-30-09 is adopted by unanimous vote. Next, we'll call up Mr. Coles and Ms. Sanchez, Valerie Sanchez, she's our Human Resources Senior Management Analyst, and of course, Mr. Coles, previously introduced, Lane County Assessor. This is uh, Order 19-04-30-10 in the matter of establishing uh, the Assessment and Taxation Specialist Classification and Salary Range, and how do you folks want to make this presentation? Um, I will go ahead and start off and okay. give the main presentation, and then uh, if there's any additional questions, uh, can be spread out between us both, if that works for you? That works. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Please proceed. So I am really excited about this change. Uh, this has been something that uh, Assessor Gangle, Assessor uh, Spickard, and myself and managerial staff have wanted to do for quite a long time. So this is a really a big deal. I think that we might have some staff here. I haven't looked behind me to see if there is staff here. Um, but uh, just to put it in a little perspective, we have uh, specialists in our department, and traditionally they've been called office assistants, senior office assistants. We don't have any uh, office assistant twos. They're all office assistant uh, seniors. And there are 16 positions. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, that specialize in areas from exemptions, personal property, uh, segregations, divisions, um, everything you could think of. I probably thought of, forgot of three or four different areas, but uh, pretty much anything with the taxation side with the, on the administrative standpoint and specialist expert standpoint, our office assistants, senior office assistants take care of. And they're very detail orientated. Uh, uh, professional uh, job duties that 
uh, it takes a number of years to uh, work up to the expertise that is needed for these positions. And looking at other counties and uh, the, just the positions themselves, uh, we have uh, assessment taxation work, working with HR, uh, working with the county administrator, and also working with ASME. Um, I came up with the classification of, of uh, assessment taxation specialist. Make sure I got that right, because we had, yes. Um, and that specialist position is a, a step above the current senior OA position. Um, it's actually grade uh, 24, which is the, uh, starts at the min of, um, get my glasses on here, 1913 and a max of 2651. And so uh, it is uh, just my pleasure to bring this in front of the board and uh, open for questions and uh, any comments that you may have. Okay, Commissioner Farr. Just one thing, Mr. Coles, it's really hard to see you this excited. Yes, please contain yes. yourself. <laughs> really, we have to have observe some decorum here. <laughs> well, I, I, I made it also just a side note. Really, I, Mike, I'm not kidding. Really, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to hold down, down here. No, I, it, 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 is, it, is, it is very exciting, and it is a long time coming. Uh, Chair Sorensen, uh, Commissioner Farr, uh, it is uh, something that really it's been a collaborative effort between not only uh, the county. Uh, uh, working, a &T working with the HR and the county administration, but going to the ASME and then working out an MOU uh, to finalize uh, that uh, change. And uh, it's uh, a very, uh, very, I think it's a very positive change, and I think that uh, it's well deserving for the employees that are being uh, reclassified. Clear reason for the excitement. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, comments, Commissioner? We're just going to make a motion if we're ready for it. We're ready. Okay. I move to approve agenda item 14B, order 19 04 30 10, in the matter of establishing the assessment taxation specialist classification and salary range as presented. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Moved by. Commissioner Buck, seconded by Commissioner Bernie to approve Order 19-04-30-10 uh, as presented. Further discussion? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> so are all you guys back there subject to this? Not oh, just a few. Okay. And what, congratulations, and prematurely, um, <laughs> what, what, what was the salary, what is it changing salary to? I see what it will become. One grade, which is about two and a half. So previously, the Thank grade you. was at grade 20. Okay. Thank you very and much. moving to grade 24. Yeah. And how does that compare then? I heard you say this is making us competitive with other counties. Is that... that I'll, is I'll ask you, Ms. Sanchez, that question. That is correct. Um, so when we do new classifications, we look at internal equity um, and also do a market. So we did do a market with our comparable counties. Okay. I was still... Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. Um, so earlier we were we were suggested by a consultant that we should celebrate uh, when the county and Ask Me creates better working conditions for its employees. Is this such an example? It is. Of working together? Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, very good. So we're ready to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion carries unanimously to approve order 19-04-30-10. Congratulations. Thanks for coming. And now the and balloons. There you go. <laughs> you. And uh, Mike, I, I, the, the excitement Mike was just overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I hope you come down from this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we are ready to go back to the top of the page to see what else we need to do. No emergency business. Uh, Mr. Mokrajski, if I call on you for number five, could you say some things about county day for us? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the, and sorry we weren't, weren't able to, uh, Laura Vincent, our recruitment coordinator, was here and prepared to make comments to introduce the group. Um, 
and just because we had such a lively public comment this morning, which actually was a great opportunity for the students to hear that public comment, um, they had to go on to their presentation. But just wanted to share that um, this is the third annual county day that we've hosted. Um, it's really been, you know, we've done a lot to build our relationship and our partnership with the University of Oregon. We recognize we have this incredible um, talent uh, it, that's being trained at the university, and we've tried to find formal ways to tap into that, both to recruit, few, you know, employees, um, prospective employees, as well as to share knowledge and engage these students in research and analysis on county issues that we're dealing with. So, third annual one, uh, we actually have hired several of these students as interns through a paid internship program. Um, in the summer of 2018, we had three of the students who went through the County Day event um, that became part of that effort. One of them worked with Dr. Creer on the audit that you're going to hear about tomorrow. Um, so today we had 15 uh, students from the University of Oregon 3 p.m. program, the Planning, Public Policy, and Management program, graduate students. Um, they heard 11 presenters. I stepped out at 11 o'clock to give a presentation about um, some of the things we're working on in my role here in the organization. They heard from uh, Mo Young about equity and access work. They heard about our strate uh, strategic plan, uh, technology. Uh, they heard from the performance auditor from Public Works, Human, Re human Resources, the assessor, um, a sheriff's deputy. Uh, they went over to the Charlton building and toured that, met with Karen Gaffney, talked about economic development with Sarah Means and the budget process with Christine Moody. So great opportunity. We handed out cards, pitched to them to contact us if they're interested. I like getting coffee or meeting with students um, if they're interested. And um, we'll continue doing uh, that county day event that we've seen a lot of benefit from. Thank you. OK, uh, Commissioner Farr. Thank you. I, it's, they did get a good uh, indoctrination as to what a board meeting can be like this morning. A bit disappointing because uh, there are a couple of people who were sitting out there who I had a chance to speak to their class last week. Um, and we talked about uh, lobbyists. They wanted to know about lobbyists. And a couple of points that I'd like to have made in front of everybody in the room is that uh, as a lobbyist, you have to be able to clearly articulate not only your view, but your uh, opponent's view. Uh, to whoever, whoever it is you're talking to. And very critical that a lobbyist does not exaggerate or inflate the uh, statements that they're making. Otherwise, they become untrustworthy. But the uh, important thing was that uh, uh, there was a Cottage Grove City Councilor among the group of 3 p.m. students this morning. I don't know if you all recognize Jake Boone was sitting in the room this morning. So uh, he's a 3 p.m. student and a, a counselor in Cottage Grove. So. Good. OK. Uh and uh, we don't have any county council announcements that I'm aware of, so we'll turn to item nine, county administration announcements. A few things, Mr. Chair. First, an elections update for you. Um, today is voter reg registration deadline. So if you haven't registered, you have just under three hours. 5 p.m. today is the deadline. We currently have over 261,000 active registered voters in Lane County. Three ways to register or update your registration. Go to OregonVotes.gov, no later than 11.59 p.m. tonight. Uh, so you have longer if you do it online. For those who have an Oregon driver's license, permit, or ID card, that's OregonVotes.gov. Two, you can deliver a completed registration card to Lane County Elections no later than five today. Uh, and, or you can mail a completed card to Elections with the postmark of today. So three ways to update or register to vote. Statutory deadlines have been met for mailing ballots to 1,035 military or out-of-country ballots. Uh, those were mailed on April 5th. 762 out-of-state voters were mailed on April 22nd. Local ballots will be mailed Thursday, May 5th. And all 20 drop site locations are open on Thursday, May 2nd. Uh, information concerning current elections can be found at lanecounty.org slash elections and select the May 21st, 2019 link. Um, if you, I imagine all of you received your voter pamphlet, so that has been obviously completed and mailed to all registered voters' addresses. Um, I want to also share that May, since this is the last board tomorrow is May 1st, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So uh, with an eye towards mental health 
in the workplace, health and wellness in the workplace. I'll pass this out and share it with commissioners. Um, we are doing a number of things. We shared that we're gonna be doing a mindfulness training session with our CHC uh, employees, so we're excited about that. Eva, our nurse practitioner at the Wellness Center, has done this. There's been heavy demand for my mindfulness training. It's been really effective in high stress environments, including parole and probation, uh, where they've had a series of mindfulness trainings. And so we're gonna roll that, continue to roll that out in different places. Um, but we're also offering one-on-one -on -one counseling at our wellness center for employees. As you may recall, we added funding for mental health, a behavioral health counselor at the clinic in the current year's budget. Um, uh, you can also do group mindfulness and resiliency sessions uh, through the wellness clinic. You can schedule an appointment uh, with one of our providers that will refer, refer you to a licensed professional counselor um, that's on site. So encourage uh, for our employees to contact the wellness center, the Live Well Center at 541-603-7930 to make an appointment. And I'll pass these out, we'll make these available, but just a reminder that May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, something that we talk about a lot uh, as a service provider in the community and also important to remember um, the programs and services we have available for our employees who have high stress jobs as well. Um, then I have a couple updates on uh, assignments that I needed to update the board on here. First, um, there was a request to report back to the board. We were required to report back to the board on the TAC report, the um, Homelessness Feasibility Study by May 1st. Uh, we have a uh, steering committee called the TAC Steering Committee, Implementation Steering Committee that has been formed and met four or five times now. I think we have one or two meetings left. We do have a joint elected official meeting scheduled between the Eugene City Council and the Board of Commissioners for May 13th at 5.30 p.m. Um, uh, so just a brief update on that. The steering committee that includes two commissioners, Buck and Farr, myself, so the city manager, the mayor, and Councillor Syrett, and two members of the Poverty and Homelessness Board um, are wrapping up our work and will finalize a implementation plan report that will go to the two bodies and the final report then will be presented uh, on May 13th. Secondly, uh, there was a request to provide an update on um, winter strategies and car camping sites. And um, with this is an item that we'll continue to work on. I just want to share that this is also part of the steering committee's efforts. You'll, you'll hear also, hopefully, if you haven't read the uh, budget message, as of yet, Thursday night, we'll talk about this, the additional funding that we've included in next year's proposed budget for the enhanced winter strategies that we launched this year. This year's enhancements were not budgeted. We made them happen through one-time uh, reserves that, that we tapped into, but we're actually budgeting resources for next year to continue that. We also continue to look, we are expanding. You heard Mr. McAllister uh, mention in public comment this morning, I didn't have a chance to say this while he was here, um, we we are expanding or extending the beds. So it was scheduled for April 30th for the beds to close, the dawn to dawn beds. We are expanding that. They're starting to ramp down, but we are gonna continue that through the end of June. Not at the same number, we had 240 beds, I believe that were available. We're gonna ramp that down, but there still will be beds available. So we continue to identify additional funding to make that happen. And then what we're working on and having conversations with the city of Eugene is how do we actually look at funding some element of a year round dawn to dawn program, not at the same level, the same number of beds as we do for the winter strategies, but some level of that. So I want to share that with the board that these, all of these things are, we are in constant conversations, um, but I know there's always concern about we take action, we make some services available, but and then a date hits and does it all go away? So we're mindful of that and, and working in partnership with the city to make sure that we're, um, uh, we don't eliminate, we just sort of adjust based on what the needs are. So that's my, my update on that one and we'll have more uh, in the future on that. And then uh, two more quickly, Mr. Chair. The, there was also a request to have a briefing for the board on emergency services protocol. So we're gonna have a joint presentation by our emergency manager and our county council on July 24th. Um, 
and that will be a general information session, so we're not assigning homework to the board as of yet, but we'll talk more about potential ICS, incident command system training that the commissioners can take if you haven't taken that. Uh, and we're viewing this emergency management training for commissioners not as a one-time work session, but as a series. It's just, it's, we're gonna, it, not unlike budgeting. Budgeting is not something we do at one point and then we finish and then we just come back to it at that same point the following year. Uh, we're gonna sort of integrate this into our regular business. Um, so expect a presentation on July 24th, but also expect that that's, you're not gonna get everything at that time, um, but we are committing to come back in regular course of business to do, uh, to conduct those trainings and make it part of our um, muscle memory and, and regular business. Um, finally, the, uh, this has come up a few times, but the um, Commissioner Bernie had requested a report back on organizations that came up in public comment today that Lane County funds the name of the organization, the amount we pay, mission of the organization, and how it benefits Lane County. Um, if you, we will have binders for commissioners and the budget committee members, and in there is a tab. We do this every year. We tell the board what are the associations we're members of and what we pay for. What we're doing a little bit more of this year because it was requested is some additional information about those organizations. But you will have a tab. Uh, so actually, you should have that if you picked up your binder. There's a tab in there, and I don't have it in front of me, but I have it in mind. It says, I don't know what it says, but uh, we can point that to you here in the next day or so. It gives you a list of the associations that we fund through the budget. These are countywide and includes the association of ONC counties, how much we pay. Um, and then I, there were a few organizations we didn't have supplemental information for. We've requested that. Uh, Associ association of ONC counties is one of those organizations. Uh, so we will continue to follow up with, with that, but we're wanting to make sure commissioners have all of that or as much of it as possible as we head into the budget process. So if you still feel like there's information we haven't provided related to that request, let us know and we'll get it to you. May I interrupt you? Yeah. Um, yeah Commissioner Buck and I, because we're new, uh, we actually attended the budget orientation and it was pointed out to us. And so we've looked at that and, and are well aware and appreciative that you're doing that. Okay, great. Um, and then a board retreat. We have scheduled a board, I'm sorry, we had scheduled a board retreat for July 10th but that's not gonna work because we don't have all commissioners available. We had talked about a day that the board can just spend sort of in a, a few hours in a training, um, working together, building relationship, understanding perspectives and the, a facilitated session. Um, we're still looking for that date because we wanna make sure all five commissioners are available. So the idea is that we would take a few hours in a morning that would be just for the five commissioners and a few key staff to help uh, facilitate, but mostly just to allow all of you time uh, in a facilitated session. And then maybe lunch, and then an afternoon session for a few hours where we would invite um, representatives from throughout the organization from key areas, department directors, elected officials, and some other key staff that work regularly with the board to do dive into some more specific things around strategies and goals and um, and other pieces. So that's what we're noodling and working on. We'll have more details as that evolves and the board can give us feedback on what you like or how you want to adjust that. But I just want to give that update to you. We're still searching for a date um, and we're going to work with a facilitator and make sure that that happens whenever we can get all five of you together. That's it. Thanks for the, the time to share all of that. Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to turn to item 10. Uh, Commissioner's announcements. Any announcements? I do. Yep, Commissioner. Uh, we were going to have a meeting on Sears Road and on May 13th, but we are now having a joint meeting with the City of Eugene on the TAC implementation um, layout or rollout. And so we will be rescheduling that event here. And when I know that date, I will let everybody know. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, any other requests for announcements? Um, I, I have an announcement. This okay. is pr pretty important. And, you know, before I came to this country, there's a, a team that really meant a great deal to me. It's called Sheffield United. And in England, there are uh, five major leagues of soccer, and they're hierarchical. They're not like major leagues of baseball. If you get better, if you get to the top of one league, you go up to the next, you go up to the next. The top one is premiership. 
we're all familiar with premierships, perhaps. You might have heard of Manchester United, Leicester. Um, well, Sheffield United over the weekend got promoted to premiership. The first time, only the second time since I left England. So it's pretty big news, and you wonder what my tie is. This is a Sheffield United tie with no less than five Sheffield United logos on it. Enough to spare if you all want one. So uh, as we say in Sheffield, up the blades. <laughs> so. Very, very good weekend for, uh, for Sheffielders. Up the Blades is not a derogatory term. It's a wonderful term. <laughs> <laughs> it means so many things. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, now, uh, under item 10B, agenda team requests and work session requests, I had a couple. The first is... I'm sorry. Oh, I blew it completely. May I don't, make... don't blow it. What is it? I, it's too We're late. We're doing a do-over. Too late. We're going to have a do-over here the Board of Commissioners. Is, is an announcement sharing something that occurred, or is it talking about something? Sure. It, that's it could okay. be pretty much anything okay. out of your I want, mouth. I want to... <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Don't start me laughing. Um, I just want to share and thank um, county staff. That I thought it was strategic that the county participate in a Springfield-centric event, which was a fundraiser for the homeless that Catholic mm -hmm. Community ser Services provides. Mm -hmm. um, um, Mr. Mokrahyski in the county did sponsor that. There were six Springfield City Council members there. They were delighted to see that we had a presence. Um, and we talked it up quite a bit. And I think you're going to find that the city of Springfield over the next few months will assign one or two council members if the TAC group so wants them to participate and to integrate from a, a coordination role, not to change the many investments they're making in housing, work, working family housing, low-income housing, and homeless services, but also simply to coordinate so that they can be part of a countywide overall plan. And I wanted to thank you for that and share that with everybody. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Um, yeah. Mayor Lundberg said that she and you have been talking about that. and Quite a lot. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Good. Uh, okay. Well, in terms of announcements, uh, continue announcement theme. One thing I would mention too is uh, this May 13, uh, 5:30 p.m. work session with the City of Eugene right here in Harris Hall. I think that'll be an important um, important event uh, for the city and the county and and for the city of Springfield. So uh, please mark your calendars for that, and please keep Ms. Uh, uh, Jones informed of your availability so we can plan this uh, this uh, retreat on any uh, Wednesday uh, when the board is meeting throughout the uh, summer so we can get a head count and start planning that. Uh, okay, now we can move to item 10B, and I have a couple of items on 10B, the uh, agenda team requests and work session requests. Uh, the first is uh, this uh, proposal uh, for the uh, three Conestoga uh, camp uh, at 13th and Tyler in Eugene. And um, this Eugene Police Department uh, just received uh, funding to build, I believe it's 10 uh, Conestoga huts that they will be able to distribute. And so one idea is that if part of the Costs associated with a uh, three person or three uh, unit uh, uh, program there at the corner of 13th and Tyler uh, that apparently the Eugene Police Department could, could supply that. Um, secondly, uh, Eric DeBurr of Community Supported Shelters said they would manage the three units. Now, the land is owned by the county. It was acquired by uh, the county as on the corner of 13th and Tyler. It was, a, it was a residence. We acquired it, and it hasn't been used much, the land. The, the house was raised, but uh, it hasn't been used much. And so with the neighborhood being relatively supportive, uh, I'd like to move ahead with a work session on this. Certainly the fair is involved in this. Certainly Lane County uh, Health and Human Services and, uh, and of course the neighborhood group and the advocates. Uh, we did get this memo from Jay Mosley, the Westside Shelter Search Team, and I 
I think I've spoken to every member of this several times and toured the site. So I'd like to get three commissioners to agree to a work session on this and see if this is something we could we could pursue. Sure. Yes, sir. Yep. And um, if I may, um, the Conestogas are really, once as I mentioned this morning to Jay Mosley, a uh, very small footprint, uh, very easy to administer, very unobtrusive to surrounding businesses, to surrounding uh, uh, residences. Uh, they're used throughout town and Springfield um, fairly extensively. And it's a relatively dignified place to live, uh, dignified as compared to a canvas tent. Um, certainly not the permanent housing that we're, that we're looking for, Ms. Mokraiska, but uh, the Conestogas, I, I would like to, I, I'm a, Yes, big head yes on this one, head nod yes, but I'd like to also consider, continue the talk regarding placing Conestogas on other county properties that are currently unused um, that would that fit in with the adjacent uh, county uses. Um, we have a number of properties, we've discussed them at length, um, and uh, as we move forward with Conestogas, it can have, just a few of them can have a huge impact on, uh, on the people who leave a canvas tent and live in a Conestoga instead. And one of the main problems that homeless people have is they don't have any place to put their their stuff. <laughs> and so one of the main advantages of these Conestogas is they can be locked. And that could be a big, uh, that enables people to take showers and apply for jobs and <laughs> take public transit and lots of things. So I, I just would like to be supportive of the, the neighborhood advocates, The and, and again, will this solve the problem? No, it will not solve the problem, but it will solve the problem for three people or at least help them. So I'd like to move forward with that. And, and again, I, I think that the fair is part of this because they own the property. The uh, Health and Human Services is part of it to, to make sure that this is done in a fair and proper manner and pull together who's going to Who's going to get the screening? Because uh, that's a big concern of mine to make sure it's screened from the rest of the fair and fairgrounds uh, activities. So I'll take that as a yes, uh, Mr. Mokraiski. We're trying around here to be more clear with these assignments. So I'll ask: Do you have any concerns about the way I've phrased it so far? Uh, I have a work session with Health and Human Services, Public Works, the Fair Board, and neighbors to discuss three kind of Stoga huts on 13th and Tyler. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, and uh, if Health and Human Services could uh, get the police department involved as being the people that have at least three Conestogas available, that would be good. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'll give my head nod to that because it does include the fair um, folks and, and um, Corey's involvement so we can understand impacts. But I'd also like to ask that they look at operational costs. Are we going to need to be supplying electricity, water, um, porta potties, um, and is, cat, is the uh, community um, supportive services folks are, gonna, are they looking for uh, annual? stipend to provide that management yep. of, the, of the site. Um, so I'd kind of like to understand what the budget is for three sites um, versus, you know, whether that's, you know, an effective use right. of, of fund in this case. So. Exactly, and where the funds would come from. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any concerns? Oh, no, I'm not familiar with the property. Why the number three as opposed uh, to five? The number three was selected by the advocates because of the West uh, Eugene neighborhood already has a substantial number of social service programs, and it's it's uh, they have concerns. The neighborhoods have concerns about the number of 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 uh, uh, people with drug and alcohol problems, the number of people who have mental health problems, and they want to accept a certain number, but they don't necessarily want to accept all of the people in the county that need these services. Um, I think it's a great question because I would like to know that too, but that's the reason they are advocating Thank you. the three. Is the wonderful start. Is because they, they don't want to be in a conflict with the neighbors over it, and Thank the you. neighbors apparently do support this. Okay, the second is we the board got, or at least I got, two letters, one from Tracktown USA and one from Travel Lane County. So I'll... Uh, pass these along to Diana Jones so they can be put 
on uh, on the website. But these letters, uh, one deals with a Tracktown USA letter, deals with a request they have for um, five hundred thousand dollar cash support um, in in um, in hosting the Olympic trials, and so. Tracktown wants to track down USA, which is a nonprofit group that is formed to bring the, the trials to uh, Lane County. They want to get going with this project uh, and uh, they would like to have a work session uh, with us, uh, August, September timeline. Um, and, and I think we should go ahead with that. Secondly, and related because it's track and field, is Carrie Westland, the CEO of, president and CEO of, of Eugene Cascades and Coast, also known as Travel Lane County. Um, they are, um, I guess they are asking for uh, a work session also on the topic of the uh, 2020 Olympic track and field trials. And, um, and I think that their focus is on the economics of these major track and field events. And Mr. Mokrajski and the agenda team briefly discussed this today. Uh, and, and I'll just ask you to clarify what you think we should be doing and I'll modify my request to match your, your uh, ideas. You're asking me? Yeah. Um... Well, I will tell you that we've had this conversation, I've had the con this conversation about the requests that have come in to Lane County, City of Eugene, and City of Springfield. We've all received requests from at least three different requests, two from Tracktown and one from Oregon 21. Important to know Tracktown and Oregon 21 are separate organizations, but for three different events, for the NC2A track field championships, for the uh, Olympic trials, and for the 2021 games. I can tell you that Eugene and Springfield, at least my peers in Eugene and Springfield, really want us to be coordinating our response so that we, uh, because we're all getting those requests. So I don't know what that means that relates to a work session. Um, I think if the board wants to have a work session, um, I would agree doing it on all of those requests. Um, even though they're separate requests, it's funding for tourism events and we have really limited resources and to track and these. field and the economics of track yes, and field. Could, absolutely. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where to go with that. Uh, the traveling county one I wasn't aware of, so it may be beneficial to have traveling county there too. So one thought is you either do a massive joint elected official meeting between the three governments, yep. which has some benefits, but also a lot of challenges to that. Um, or we just acknowledge we're gonna do them all separately um, to sort of hear what the requests are and then maybe have follow-up discussions with those different bodies. Well, could we just uh, maybe pose the idea, I'm just posing this and I'll call on you in a second. Um, I'm just posing this idea to ease their presentation and also to really make it a, a great opportunity for them to present this, maybe here at Harris Hall or at the Springfield City Council Chamber, uh, Whole, yeah, I don't know if that Springfield, that Springfield City Cham Camber Chamber won't be big enough, but at Harris Hall, have all three elected bodies watch the presentation, not only uh, by Tracktown USA, not only by uh, Cascade, um, Eugene Cascades and Coast, but anyone else that is promoting uh, track and field events, magnitude, large large track and field events and just have them give us a briefing, all of us, well, in, in the fall. Now, maybe, maybe there's some better ideas. And Commissioner Bernie, go well, ahead. A, a briefing is different, is it not? I don't know, than a work session? Yeah, hey, Mike, My is. concern is and that I, I'm looking forward to learning about this, but is there a precedent that anyone can have us do a work session on the basis of a big request for dollars, where my understanding is our discretionary dollars are pretty finite and I, i'm just wondering how how that works no. i don't yeah. know uh, jay yeah i was gonna say you know we've had requests like this come to the board before to, for us to support financially different events we supported um uh the olympic trials i think in in a previously but it was one of the first ones i think the board 
uh, provided about two hundred thousand dollars or something. I can't remember what the, the the number was, but it was a while back. It was yeah, several payments over five years. Yeah, and it was yeah, and it and it was. So my concern about this is this: yeah, you know, we do have a limited of, uh, of flexible funds. It either has to come out of our discretionary general fund, uh, or we have to somehow or another tie it to you know, video lottery economic activity, which has to be tied to jobs, which I don't know if we, it, those aren't, those are events, not permanent jobs. So it's tough to tie it to video lottery. Then the only thing beyond that is room tax, which we've pretty well tapped out in, in various other places. There's not a lot around. I would rather have this discussion as part of our budget than as a separate work session. And if they want to make a proposal for us to amend or to set it up in our budget and amend our budget to supply them with funds, let's balance it against everything else we're doing and have it in a vacuum three months after we passed our budget and try and come up with one-time money or something. I, I just, you know, we're, we just finished talking about how we're going to up our game on winter strategies and how we're funding that. And, and here we have somebody walking in, you know, and our, our first time, you know, funding the first set of, of Olympic trials was supposed to be a one-off thing, and now they want us to come up with an, a half million dollars. I, I just, I, I'm having real difficulty, particularly seeing there's a lot of costs that come to Lane County with those events outside the fence line. You know, the, the people that come here, the public safety and security issues that our sheriff's department has to deal with, um, public works, other things, there is a cost, and then they want us to supply the cost for inside the fence, if you, know, it, it, if you get what I'm saying. So I, I'm really reluctant to set up a work session. I would rather discuss this over the next month as part of the budget. You know, if we're going to start supplying money for these sort of events, we should set aside some money and set up a competitive process for making those decisions. Instead of having people send us a letter, come in one off, and be the only people, you know, getting swung those funds. It, it, is it fair is, or equitable? My understanding is they don't, they're not asking for anything in this budget process. They want to have a briefing in, in the fall. They specifically talk about $500,000 they want from the county. I don't know what that, if that's not, it's yeah, not it's maybe like, this budget process, answer, but they're talking yeah, about but it's, funding. What I'm saying is they, they're not asking for money in this budget. You're not, they're not trying to make an end run around this budget. They're not asking for money in this budget. They want to have a briefing about the economics of it. And by the way, a lot of the questions you just asked would be really good questions. Now, my impression is that they have returned more money than, than in, in terms of revenue than we have given them. That may not be true, but that's my impression. And that's what I'd like to raise at the work session is to get that. But to be competitive, to receive these events in the future, we are going to have to play at a national, if not international, level. And to do that, we're going to have to uh, put money into it. Now, whether uh, I like the idea of having a briefing on the overall impact of these track and field events, and we may well, with the new uh, uh, state-of-the-art facility that will be opening, we may well be uh, a, a world-class place to hold these. But if we don't want to fund them, and if that's not the direction of our political leadership in in Eugene and Springfield, Lane County, and that we don't want to do these events, we better communicate that, you know, pretty soon. Because as a community, we have to we have to really want to do this. They don't just give these events to people that are kind of marginally interested in them. They, they, people have to really want them, and they have to decide whether it's really in the interest of their community or not. And that's the reason I, I think that we shouldn't do this as part of the budget process, because they're not even asking for money in this budget. They're asking that we look at it down the road, and, in, and yeah, they have a specific dollar amount, but it's not in this year's budget. Yeah. I could give you more information, but you didn't look this way, so. Okay, uh, Commissioner, uh, Buck, you asked to be recognized, and I see that you are want to talk. Go sure. Ahead. Um, I understand both points of view. I know that uh, the, the ask in and of itself is quite significant, and we may or may not be able to participate in that. But my first question is, have we ever had a joint meeting with both 
cities together here. Yes. And if they're okay, um, yeah. okay. And because if there, you know, if there ever was a major subject to discuss, I mean, this this is it. Like this is a major economic thing in our community. And if it's a briefing um, for all of us to come together and talk about this, uh, I think that's worthwhile. You know, ultimately allocating funding to it at some later date is probably an individual, you know, governmental decision to make. Um, but I, I do like the idea of having a meeting with everybody um, here. I don't know how often this happens, but, you know, we should be inviting our our, our big cities to our meetings on a regular basis or at least some kind of periodic basis about these kinds of significant economic issues in our area. Um, and this is a great opportunity to do that. Yep. Commissioner Farr. Yep. Okay. Uh, does anyone uh, then, then let's just uh, put it on the table. Who wants to have a work session with uh, a briefing with uh, Eugene and Springfield and Lane County to do this. I would. Okay, two, and uh, let's then not do it, and then we'll just tell them. And now we haven't decided what we're going to do. But, but I, yep. I, w I was concurring with what Heather said about a briefing. To me, okay. that's different than a work session. Okay. Uh, who wants to have a briefing? <laughs> well. Uh, uh, if it's a joint one about yeah. the whole entire subject right. that's coming to our community, right. I, 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 I'm there. Yeah, okay. I think then uh, we at least have three commissioners that want to have a briefing with Eugene and Springfield over. Uh, and, and again, the timeline for this will be more uh, August, uh, September-ish, uh, so that we're not dictating the time, but we're suggesting some dates to Eugene and Springfield and and maybe Mr. Mokhaisky, you can talk with your colleagues, the city managers, on what their level of interest is and let us know. Okay. And these are the letters, and I'll give these to Ms. Jones. These are the letters I got from Traveling Camp, or excuse me, uh, Eugene Cascades and Coast and, and the uh, Track Down USA. Okay. All right. Any other uh, agenda team requests or work session requests? Okay, uh, we finished our executive session. Any other business? I see no other business. So we are going to be adjourned until tomorrow morning when we will start up at 9 a.m. for our work session on the Lane County Parks long-term long acquisition of the North Jetty uh, Florence uh, part, part, Florence area from the DSL and our report on the recruitment and retention audit for the Board of Commissioners. Can I pass these down before the commissioners leave? You sure can. Thanks. You sure can. Okay. Maine is Mental Health Awareness Month. Okay, so we are adjourned until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.